Hey everyone, my name is Nick and today I'm gonna just share a little bit about my music creation process. I thought that would be a nice idea to just kind of talk about how I make music, how I produce music and because everything in the production I make by myself, I thought it would be an interesting thing to be shared on the internet. So really big, big news for me was the recent release of the 22 album on Spotify, Apple Music and other platforms. I've been waiting for this for, well, for this particular album not that long, but overall for my music to go live for streaming services. It's been many years since I just started uh, creating music. Uh, it's been like five or so years. And I know it's just a start, of course, that I'm just starting out. I don't know many other many things about music creation, music production, promotion, PR. That's all of the things that I don't know yet, but I know that I will grow. And I invite you to grow with me by involving you in this process where I take you on a journey where um, I just explain to you how I did what I did. So let's start with number one, which is music creation. And for me, music creation has always been digital. In my childhood, I had a flute and I also played some guitar and ukulele when I was in a camp. But mostly the majority of my tracks, almost practically all of them are made digitally. And when you're approaching music creation in a digital way, you need to select your platforms, you, your instruments, and of course you can also connect your instruments that you have on hand to your phone or tablet or, or your computer and record the music as you play along. However, uh, I don't have any of those instruments. I grew up in a poor family and we didn't have money for instruments more and, or even any other kind of that stuff. Only when I was growing up and became a semi-adult, a young adult, I gathered some money for some equipment for my hobbies. Um, basically, there's an app called Oxy Pro, and you can subscribe to get access to more sounds, um, the sound library. There are also applications for Mac, which is Ableton, Audacity, and Logic Pro X. Um, and GarageBand, which is universal, and I started out using GarageBand in my tablet at the time, but it was very funky, you had to do everything manually, and it wasn't a very good experience overall. I did create a few tracks. So, on my computer, I keep Audacity, Logic Pro X, and Ableton for beat mixing and creating some music, but the main process of all my music creation is in my phone. Whenever I feel infused by the vibes that I think that would be cool to be heard, I, th I always create with my phone or maybe sometimes tablet because there is no computer uh, alternative for OxyPro. And I love this app because it gives me flexibility and also it limits me to certain sounds, sound library, so I always create something in my own particular style. And even if I search something else, uh, if someone has created using OxyPro, it's always a different style. So it doesn't matter that we are both using the same sounds, which is our, which is within a limited library. We everyone has this their own style in creating even a mobile application uh, so um, the latest album that i released it was completely done in uh, oxy pro and uh, as i mentioned before i'm no guru in this sense in mastering or developing something crazy on this track i just tap on the notes and then change the characteristics of like reverb, low pass and or docker or this, these kinds of effects and then just experiment with the beat. But that's, I think that's how every creator does it, no matter what platform or software they use for creating digital media, digital sounds.
Okay, next up, production. Now, when I released music for the first time, I needed an album cover, and I did it by myself. Now, I'm thinking to uh, outsource it, but my friends who do design, I have some network of friends on Instagram especially who do design. I keep thinking that it would be a really cool idea to ask someone to do design for my album art, but I think one day I will definitely collaborate with some graphic designer, uh, digital artist who will create some album artwork for me, which will be really crazy and awesome. Basically, I use like Photoshop, Figma and Sketch for drafting design ideas and then I just use my phone to make some pictures, which is also very simple. I do have background in graphic design. I've been working for, in graphic design for several years now, but nevertheless, production is also handled by myself. Next up is PR, social media, but also release, release and distribution, because when you have album art and you have your sound, you can already register at a distributor or apply for a um, label participation. You can contact any label that you would like to um, be involved with and uh, ask them to release your music. For example, a friend of mine is working on proposing his music to a label in Ukraine, and I think this is very awesome because labels have more uh, advantages before distributors. Distributors are available to everyone on the internet, everyone around the world, and you can basically pay a fee to become eligible for music release on all major platforms for music streaming. But a label is also responsible for promotion in uh, offline, let's say, yes? And basically, when you sign a contract with a label, as far as I understood, I've never done this before, but as far as I have heard, read, and told, been told, Basically, you agree to release a certain amount of music in a certain period of time, but also the label will will offer your services as a musician to different uh, events uh, or share your music on their platforms, on social media. Hi, it's me, Nick the Editor, and I just wanted to say that Usually distributors allow you to take all the copyright rights to your music and or song lyrics and samples or mu instruments, while labels usually are the holders of the copyright to your music. So that's also some major uh, cornerstone when you're selecting whether using a label or a distributor. Yep. Okay, bye. And their accounts, I mean. And that's a great outreach for your music that is very talented and very professional, of course, but for someone like me, which who does very experimental things, I don't think I have a label yet that I can apply to, unless someone will find my uh, songs and will contact me and will want to promote me more, which is unlikely because my music, as I mentioned, is very experimental and basically done on a phone. <laughs> Uh, and the distributor part, yes, uh, I'm distributor. I'm releasing my music through a distributor, which is uh, I'm using Record Union, but there's also others like City, uh, City Baby, or others. I have uh, looked them up, but I when I saw that Record Union has a very high um, trust rate from Spotify, I immediately understood that. Uh, I need to choose exactly that platform because Spotify is the most popular one in Europe and Ukraine. Um, Apple Music is less popular, SoundCloud is probably the most popular because it's free. And yeah, I chose Record Union and the first I released my single Love and it was like the reason why I chose Love was because it had the most uh, outreach on SoundCloud. I saw that this track was loved by most people than any other track and I thought if any track should make it to all platforms at once it should be the one that was really liked by others since everyone wanted to hear it so much. Of course I wanted to release the track that would be listened to and 
when I'm saying like this is engagement. But that's the real world, I think. That's how labels talk, actually. And there's no shame in being a musician, but also be your own production manager. Uh, it's just how things work, and you just have to accept it. There's nothing wrong about it. After Love, I released basically, I think it was yesterday or today, um, 22, which is an album. And I thought it was a mini album, but someone on Twitter uh, called me out and said it was a full album if it has eight tracks, but I don't think it's like it only has eight tracks, right? It's not that big. Uh, but these are all fresh. These are these were all made like uh, within 2021, and I'm really passionate about it. I'm really happy about how they turned out. They're very experimental, but they carry on the new vibe that I felt when I came came back home. And they're very different from the ones that I released three years ago, which makes sense because people change, our edits change, my health has changed. So next to PR, social media and promo stuff. This one is tricky, I guess. So when you're about to release music, you need to accept that uh, you either have some following on social media accounts or no following at all because musicians are usually very shy or closed people I mean there are outgoing musicians whether you're a DJ or not it really defines your way in promotion because usually when DJs really stop they have more attentions than more attention than people who are not DJs and I'm not a DJ myself I have touched a DJ controller once in my life and I really enjoyed it. I also mixed some stuff on my computer, but that does not make it me a DJ. Even though I make like mixtapes or something like that sometimes. And if there are no live performances, if you have no uh, audience offline, if you only have online audience, the best way is to have some ads on your music because otherwise your music will not be heard and as I'm saying this I'm actually starting this by myself and I haven't seen the results yet on this particular ad campaign but in my other uh, side of my life where I work with marketing managers and editors I do know that for sure uh, marketing strategies like this like ad campaigns on Facebook and uh, Instagram do have some impact on your reach. Marketing tools for promoting anything, you can do that. But for me, I just basically created a, a like interesting for viewing uh, content, which is promotional stuff like videos and images, which I frankly must say that I didn't do a lot of them and I didn't do them for a long period of time. Everything was rushed in. You can also, if you have, on PR stuff I mean, you, if you have uh, released your music already on Spotify or Apple Music, there are dedicated artist pages for that. For Spotify, usually they're claimed automatically by distributors. Apple Music, YouTube Music, they have to be claimed manually. YouTube Music is a bit tricky. Maybe I'll do a video about that one when I get claimed it. I think Spotify is the best for artists because it has the most outrageous for me the statistics because it really shows a lot of data about the listens, the reach, about the release itself and iTunes, this Apple Music is not very good. Yeah, happy listening, that's it. I think uh, if you create music digitally and you want to promote it more, uh, there's no be better way than releasing it to streaming platforms because it does give you more outreach than even SoundCloud does sometimes. And of course you need to go beyond your friend circle. You need to have some more outreach because that's how... Well, it's not about success, it's about getting your ideas out into the world. I think that's kind of beautiful. <laughs> uh, that's, what, that's something that drives me when I see that, okay, my music is actually released and people will actually hear it. That's the results that I'm passionate and happy about when I'm thinking or talking about music. 
Well, that was it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Now, so please, uh, please subscribe to this channel. I'm making videos sometimes, but I do put a lot of effort into them, a lot of my mental energy, and also some research sometimes. And also, please leave a like on this video so I understand and know that you enjoyed this video and uh, you have watched it. And you can comment if you have any questions. I will be really glad to answer all of them. And yeah. Merch is available on my Instagram account. I will also leave a link in the description below. And yeah, watch all of my other videos. Thank you. Bye.